Jordan Griffin. Welcome to MMA Live TV, dude. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Uh, we're, we're live from uh, Casa del Griffin. Is this the crib? Yeah, yeah, this is the crib. Let me see. Let me give you a little tour. It's yeah, nice a little one. messy. My, I got I, actually, I'm cleaning right now. So, this is me. I was, uh, I was on some, uh, I was on, wait, am I got facing the right way? There you go. That right there. I was yeah. on some, uh, I was in like a photo gallery that yeah. like toured the nation. Wow. Um, this dude like randomly hit me up and took pictures of me. I didn't know the, the, the photos were going to be all over the nation in like a traveling thing. That's awesome. And he gave the artist, yeah, the artist gave that to me. So, so that's pretty cool. And then, uh, I just put these pictures up here. And then these are my belts. Hopefully one day I'll put, you know, in the next next year or two, I maybe in the next in the next maybe year and a half or so, I'll yeah. add the UFC, you know, UFC one over here somewhere. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, hey, and then this is my work desk. I just have a bunch of stuff here. Yeah, nice one. It definitely oh, looks cool. cleaner than my desk. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mate, uh, but, yeah. your nickname, Native Psycho. Who who gave it to you? How how did that all come about? Uh Duke Rufus. Duke Rufus gave me that name. Um it was what was it? It was Dirty Dog, then it was Psycho Hammer. Yeah. And then uh he was like, you know, I'm Native American, Mexican, and black. So he was like, You should do something more with your roots and I never really knew my dad or anything. He's yeah. the black side of my family. So uh so he's black, my mom's Native American, Mexican. And I know a lot of like my native native side of my family. So, uh, you know, and I really, really close with my grandmother. So um, wherever I went, my grandma would be like, wherever you go, you let people know you're Native American. And uh, and definitely. So it's he came up with it. he said, how about we just how about we do Native Psycho? And I was uh, fighting on the, you know, fighting on tribal land. Yep. and People loved it. So, yeah, nice one. Nice one. Uh Tell us a bit more about your, your Native American background in the sense that, you know, I know in UFC Norfolk you had, had the crest of, of the Bad River Band on. And how important is, is that to you to, to, to represent that? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's really important to me. So my uh, growing up, my grandmother, she's 100% Native American. Um, and uh, again, she said, wherever you go, let people know you're Native American. And, you know, she was she had a lot of pride in, you know, who she was and where she came from. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's just something that I've really held on to over the years and I'm proud, you know, I got a son and uh, I got him registered with the tribe yeah. and, um, that's something that he can, you know, he, it'll benefit him in the future as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the big plan right now is, you know, I want to, I want to get big in the UFC. Yeah. I want to make as much money as I can make. And I want to start giving back, um, in some way to, to the tribe, you know, my tribe and other tribes are you know, all over the nation. That'd be, that's like the big dream, you know? So we just got to win these fights. Yeah. Got to bust out a win streak, you know? How many other native Americans are there in the roster that you're familiar with? I'm just trying to think. You know what? Yeah. There was a guy who was, uh, who was posting like all of the native, like natives, uh, people who are native American in the UFC. Yep. And I've been, yep. and he like tagged me in it. So there's, there's quite a bit, mm. you know, uh, of native Americans, not a lot, but there, there's more than I thought. Yeah, and the right. only one that I, I really recognized before was Bro Brock Weaver. Correct. Yeah. And I've been following Brock ever since he fought, uh, uh, Charles Bennett. Yep. Um, I, I had been following Brock Weaver. So I was like, dude, this dude's awesome. You know? And I was so happy when he made it to the UFC, man. Like you see somebody else make it to the UFC, you know how hard they fought and to yep. get there. He dudes a character. So I, I love it that he made it. But other than that, I, I really wasn't too sure like about anybody else who, you know, who was native until, uh, I, I wish I remembered his, uh, what his page was, but yeah, he like reposts a lot of stuff and it's pretty yep pretty good too the stuff he posts yeah fair enough and when you say register to yeah yeah no worries all right what were you saying when you say register to a tribe what does that mean exactly well just like i'm in, i'm enrolled so what happens is when you're younger you have to go through a process you basically have to get voted into the tribe and then you have to someone has to vouch for you that like you know like you're they're, you're their blood lineage pretty much. So mm. what I did is I went in 
and I said, you know, hey, this is my son Carter, and you know, he he's my son, and I'm in the tribe, so I would like to put him on the list to get voted in. And then what my mom and my grandmother did, they did the same thing. My yep. grandmother did it for my mom. My mom did did it for me. So um, it was, you know, it's cool. It's cool yeah, to, like, you know, be able to do that for him. Yeah, it gives you a sense of, of belonging. It's always good to know where your roots are from. Yeah, man, it's, it's hard, dude. I mean, I grew up like, you know, I grew up, you know, mi mixed. I don't speak Spanish. What was that that Miguel song where he talks about uh what's normal like, anyway said, yep yep dude everything he said in that fucking song i was like oh my god <laughs> love, love 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 miguel yeah really good yeah dude and uh, i was like fuck dude it's funny when i clean up people like literally it's either i get i look like miguel or i look like childish gambino <laughs> and i'm like oh shit <laughs> Mate, it, it, it's not a bad spectrum to be honest <laughs> yeah yeah right but uh, but yeah no dude that 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 whole everything he said about you know like didn't you know he doesn't speak spanish uh you know you, you know I, I wish i had the lyrics right in front of me and yeah. i could just like say it. it's just like i was like dude so for him for me to latch on to being native american even though i'm not 100 percent full blood native american like i yeah. think that was huge for me because my and that's huge for my grandmother to give that to me um nice. because it gave me something to have pride in like who i was you know or who i am you know because i never knew my dad either so Yep. So mate, it's COVID at the moment. What are you doing? So I, I see you're still working. So T-Mobile is considered a essential service in the States. Yeah, man. People need to talk, bro. What are you talking <laughs> on right now? <laughs> we gotta talk. So we how, gotta how, stay how connected? How frequently are you working though? Dude, I'm working because the gym's closed down and all this other stuff's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm working there almost every day. So I'm only taking. I'm working there five days a week. Wow. Um, pretty much f full time, you know, for the next month. Mm. Um, I've been trying to get some training in. I plan on moving up to 155 pounds. So um, not permanently, but just to kind of see what I can do um, at, at 155. And then, you know, uh, getting serious about it and, and jumping back and forth, 145, 155. Just it all matters on, you know, the fight opportunities. And if I think it'd be a great fight, I'm never yep. going for I'm never going for for easy fights, yep. so I, it, you know what I mean. It's it, but at 155, it, it's kind of cool because I can really see who like Anthony Anthony or Paul Felder. I can see who they've matched up against, yes. yeah. and I can really I got a feel for it. And I I spar with those guys all the time, so it's just yes. like it's cool to to see. You know, I can watch who they fought before, how they did, and um, kind of see where I can my gauge or if I can do better or anything like that. I don't know. So when you say 155, is this uh, like thinking, because I've talked to with a couple of fighters brought about with the fact that once the UFC does go back into to game on mode, there'll be a lot of events that will need to be made up in a short period of time and we're looking for fights or is this the 155 something you've always kind of eyed? I mean, that was the end goal even before I was in the UFC, even before yep. I was a pro fighter is I was like, man, because I, I couldn't, um, it's kind of crazy. I even made it to 145. But, uh, you know, it was like me, oh, you're a one, you're a small 170 pounder. That's what they told me. Yeah. And they said, oh, go down to 55. Oh, you're a small 155 er Yep. Okay. And then I'm like, I'm not actually, I'm really not. And yep. then they're like, oh yeah, you know, you look real skinny at 145. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. Cause I cut, just cut like 30 yourself. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm just at a point where I'm just like, I feel confident enough in like what I know yep. that I think I can go between 45 and 55. I think I can do great things. And, and to be honest, I feel like as long as I'm doing what I want to do, and I know that sounds crazy, but as long as I'm doing what I want to do, I have a hundred percent confidence in it. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I've been doing what other people want me to do for a long time. Yep. And I just have to start doing like what I would like, you know, what I want to do. So, yep. So, how how close are you with with Paul and the guys? Do you get to train with them regularly when things are normal? Yeah, yeah. When they're here, uh, usually Paul comes in when he has a camp. He comes in like eight to twelve weeks out. Sure. And um, yeah, and it's it's pretty it's pretty regular. Um, and then Anthony, when Anthony, whenever Anthony's in camp, you know, I get a chance to train with him. Um, I've been training a lot more with like with like Sergio Pettis and yep. with uh, Emmanuel Sanchez and like Rafi on stats. Like I train; those are like my regular regular sparring partners. Yep. Um. So and those guys are hard as hell to go with. So I'm fortunate. 
fortunate to do it. I got, I'm right now I'm like easing myself back into training. Yeah. Um, cause, uh, I, you know, once, once the world does open up in a month, I don't want to be like super out of shape and I don't want my mentality to like go away, you know, where it's like, yeah. let's train today or let's get some shit done. You know? So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell us a bit about your journey into MMA. How did you even get in, in into MMA? Uh, tell us about the contender series, all of that. Oh, uh, what was it called? I got jumped. I got jumped like was that like almost 10 years ago now yeah yep. i was like 18 or 19 yep. so uh yeah or over that like 11 years ago so i got jumped outside of a gas station across the street from uh the police station in milwaukee wow. um so yeah i got jumped in it was by a bunch of dudes and um i hit two of them pretty good and then uh i don't know i ran into the cop the police station they were just sitting in my car and yep. I was like, I told the cops, I was like, hey, these guys are just sitting right across the street. I need you to send somebody over to like get like save my car pretty much. Yep. And they were like, oh, I'm sorry. It's, everybody's out on their post. And I was like, well, can you guys go? There's two of them. I was like, they were like, no, we have to stay at our post. Yep. And I said, okay. So I, <laughs> you know, I was just like, okay, whatever. And I think the following week I was up in a gym. I was at Adrian Serrano's. He fought at like UFC 27. Uh, and I had heard about him and I went up there and, and um, started training from there. So, yeah, right. uh, yeah, and I, when, I wasn't even thinking about fighting, so I didn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. When um, you were in the contender series, uh, did you always f- feel confident in your, in your ability to make to make it to the UFC? Or do you, did you generally have those, those nerves and, and those doubts that a lot of people are plagued by? Uh, I was nervous going in. Yeah, I was nervous going in, um, but then once I got it, it was it's usually the same. It's like once I got to the cage, it was just like, okay, I'm here. Yeah. And um, I don't know, man, it was like a crazy dream, like yeah. to be honest. Like it was like I wasn't even in my own body. My mom and my brothers were cage side. Um, the Contender Series, like in the Tough House or whatever, where the training facility is, like the uh, – everything was very quiet. Like you could hear, I could hear Duke Rufus like off to the side, even though he wasn't in my corner, he was off to the side with Anthony. Yep. And uh, I could hear them. I could hear my corner. I, you could hear everything in there and people, you know, everyone was very quiet. So it's like, if you heard one person talk, you could, you could really hear it. And uh, I just remember like, you know, if I made a mistake or anything like that, they're like, get out of there, do this, you know? And I, almost like I was getting coached by Duke from the sidelines, yeah, right. from the crowd. Yep. It was just really weird. But, uh, yeah, I just remember that. I remember getting hit. My vision split, and yeah. I saw two of them. And I told them, they're like, what, what were you thinking? I was like, I'm just going to swing at both these dudes. Because <laughs> I swung at one, and when yeah. I swung at him, I was like, cool, I missed. And he yeah. went he went around, he ran right into this one. Yeah. And I yeah. dropped him, and I just choked him right away. So yeah. it was an unreal experience, for sure. Absolutely. Um, How did the association with Duke Rufus come about? Like, how did that happen? Uh, it was, uh, what was it? Whenever uh, Anthony fought for the WEC world title, yep. when he was fighting Ben Henderson, I was on the amateur circuit. I was like uh, 4-0 on the amateur circuit. Yep. And um, I, shit, I was still in high school. So, like, he, the, they hit me up and they were like, yeah, you know, they hit up my coach and basically asked if I could be a body to spar Anthony because I was like the same size as Ben Henderson. Yep. And I was a South and I'm a Southpaw. So I went in and, uh, I met all the guys and then I, you know, I floated around for a couple of years from like gym to gym. And then I finally ended up at Rufus sport and I've just stayed there, you know, yep. since. So how, how, how is Duke as a, as a, as a coach and a mentor? Oh, uh, he's good. He's really good. I mean, it's, you're talking about someone who's not only training me, he's not only training me on like what to do and how to fight but he's training like my mentality he's training you know i feel like i've really grown as like a person being at rufus sport and you know it's um i think there's a lot of life changes and what you know especially making it to the ufc and um you know they're like hey save all the money you can make as much money as you can save your money you know you got taxes and you got all this other stuff but then just you know just other stuff man like i think fighters got a lot of uh unique life problems Yep. And, um, and you know, it, it's nice to have Duke and Anthony and all these other guys there that have already been through it. So I, you know, if I got a problem, I just go ask them pretty much, you yeah. know? Yeah. 
it's a it's a good meeting of the minds with, with that that whole that whole gym yeah yeah for sure i mean i've heard about other gyms where like you show up and like you know a lot of guys are unfortunate you know they they just like train by themselves and stuff like that or they train with like a small knit group of people yeah and i guess you could say like rufus sport is like that in the sense that we train with a smaller group of guys but like we're all like very close so yep. like i mean a small group is like like 15 to 20 dudes on average you know what wow. i mean yeah it's um, decent. so it, but we're all there every day so it's nice you know yeah cool in on topology it says that your foundational style is freestyle do you actually resonate with that as a categorization and do you feel that a, as a fighter it's important to to be labeled to have a, a foundation or how, what do you think about that label i mean i'm not i'm not the guy i didn't i didn't have like you know i didn't I haven't been wrestling since I was six. I, yeah. I haven't been doing jujitsu for, I mean, now I've been doing jujitsu for, you know, and grappling for a decade, but you mm -hmm. know, before it was like, I, I had no background. I was the dude that just showed up and I started fighting and maybe I'd been in a couple street fights and, yeah. you know, I figured if I'm going to fight, well, I might as well get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll stick this out. So, um, as far as like, yeah, I just always put freestyle because I was like, I don't, I'm, I don't know what else to call myself. You know, I, I, I like to box and I like to jujitsu people, you know what yep. I mean? Um, yep. And I'm working on the wrestling. The wrestling's in progress always. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so speaking of jujitsu, I, I, I saw your interview after UFC Norfolk and it seemed when you were explaining that like interchange of, of how you came to submission, there was a real sparkle in your eyes. Like is jiu-jitsu something that you've learned to appreciate later on or, or how does it integrate within your fighting style and how are you seeing fights at the uh, moment? Well, yeah, when I started out, I mean, I was told it was just submission wrestling mm. um, and I didn't really have big of a wrestling background, but but I was just taught what I was taught and then I learned about jiu-jitsu and the gi. And yeah, I definitely have like, it's evolved into more of like a passion. Yeah. Um, after I got signed, after I won at the contender series, I came back and said, Hey dude, can I help teach jujitsu? Can yeah. I help professor assist professor? And he was like, yeah, sure. So I, I've been working the last year, year or so, like, uh, assisting professor Wanderlei at yeah. Rufus sport. And I've learned so much, like so much more by just teaching. Yeah, and, um, I mean, what I got eight, is it eight or nine submissions, you know, finishes, I mean, Without those finishes, it, it, my career, I wouldn't even be here. You know what I mean? So uh, I definitely do respect and appreciate uh, jujitsu. And it's kind of cool. Like, I think I have like like three or four highlight submissions that people are like, literally people hit me up and are like, how did, how did you do that? You yeah. know, so I'm going to start posting more videos, like instructional videos on like certain techniques I've done. And yep. then I want to do, and I had talked about this a year ago, uh, professor's assistant. So I want to start a page called professor's assistant where I just show like basic stuff like shrimps and, you know, yep. for white belts. So yep. that's good. Yeah. There's nothing like teaching something that actually gets your brain thinking in a different way, um, about a certain yeah. sort of concept. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So mate, you've had three fights in the UFC now. You know, two tough ones with with Ige and, and Chase, um, and, and a good win against T.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. With the three fights so far, what what do you feel has stood out as as defining moments in your UFC career so far, or or, or what do you think has been different about it from your your other sort of fighting uh, promotion? I mean, yeah, yeah, Duke being on the positive side, staying on the positive side. He said, "Look, you went all six rounds. You went six rounds in your first two you know, you went all the rounds in your first two UFC fights. He's like, yeah, he's like, there's small things you got to work on. He's like, but you know, you didn't get, you didn't get your ass kicked. You know what I mean? Sure. So yep. it's just, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Um, and so, you know, they went to unanimous decisions and it didn't go my way. Yep. Um, I've watched the fights over and over again. I tried to fix a couple things. The only reason, I mean, I'm not going to lie. TJ Brown too. His takedowns were like, his takedowns were pretty good. But the only reason I was accepting him so much and not trying to defend as much is just because he was giving me his head just so yeah, okay. much. And I was just like, I was like, it's, it's going to come eventually. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm happy I won. I'm, I'm very blessed. I got the, the, um, what's it called? The bonus. And yep. I just got to keep growing. Yeah, absolutely. So. Do you feel in terms of your style that you're, you're fighting an internal, um, 
what's the word? I'm not, I'm not too sure the word of of balancing aggression and being smart in the octagon. Or, or do you feel you've got that stuff down, Pat? Uh, I yeah, I gotta I gotta work on calming down, dude. I get so hyped <laughs> sometimes. I get so a fucking hyped sometimes. Like I'll just go in there. I just want to like tear some shit up. Yeah. And like you'll even see in like maybe my last like five fights, like. I'm very much like trying to calm down and not just charging somebody because sure. that's what I used to do. I used to just fucking charge everybody up. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, so it, it, it's, it's been, yeah, it's been a huge progression. Um, trying not to do that. Uh, at the same time, it's like, I have to understand that like there's this last fight was the best because I slept, I slept the shit out of TJ. Yeah. Um, and it was like cool to, I guess, feel comfortable enough to do that. You know yep. what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can elbow him. Oh, yeah, yep. I can, you know what I mean? Yep. So it was, it, it's cool to, to see that progression, you know? Yep. How real, uh, so you get, you get, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's part of the persona and the moniker, like when you get G'd up at the, uh, the announcing of the name and stuff like that, is a dreadlin dump. Is it, is it a real thing? Like, does it actually really uh, affect fighters in, in your experience or not really? Yeah, I mean, when you're you're working out, like it's like you're trying to like warm yourself up in the back, yeah. and you go a li- maybe a little bit too hard. I mean, at least this is me personally speaking. Uh, I think I've had you know one or two adrenaline dumps where I'm just like, fuck, these dudes feel heavy, or you know, yeah. because it's it's just such a big mixture of things, dude. It's it's you cutting weight. How did you cut weight? Did you cut weight bad? Did you cut weight good? Did yeah. you rehydrate good after you cut all that weight? Sure. Um, you know, did you warm up like super, super early? Like, did you get to the venue and then start warming up right away? And yeah. then your fight wasn't for another two hours. You yeah. know what I mean? Three yeah, yeah. Hours. there's a lot of, so a lot of variables, I right? Think, uh, yeah, there's just so many variables, dude. I just stay super relaxed the whole time. Um, fighting doesn't scare me. Um, I, fighting stopped scaring me a long time ago. It's making, making weights my big battle like that's the big battle is making weight um i've never had problems making weight or missing weight just because i'm so on top of it yeah but uh but yeah the making weight's the big the big battle fighting's not so i show up dude and i'm relaxed and i'm chill and um my big thing is i i need to stop being too relaxed like i'm almost too relaxed where i'm like oh yeah he has my back oh yeah so this last fight professor was like do not give up your back <laughs> yeah. and uh i was like okay okay and i didn't and it, it worked out for me so you know looking at your fights i think where that comes from is you've got an uncanny ability to es- to escape submission positions uh i yeah. don't know if you <laughs> <laughs> and i think that you know I don't yeah. want to speak. I don't want to speak too fast, but I am unchokeable. Uh, here, we go, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, but 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 that's what I mean. I've, I've seen like a lot of positions where I think, I mean, it, what what's also interesting is when you have you know Felder commentating your fights because you can see that he's he's trying to remain impartial, but he loves like obviously there's that camaraderie between brothers. But so that that's funny in its own right, but. Uh, but yeah, like you've got this, uh, it happened in the contender series. Um, it happened against Chase. And I, I think that sometimes you just, yeah, you have that ability where you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go for this knowing that, you know, it's probably not the highest, highest leverage here, but I, I think I can get out of it. But yeah, I guess it's a balancing act as a fighter, right? Like your consistent levels of risk management yeah. need to be well, factored in. Yeah. And my biggest thing too is, I just got to stop putting myself in those bad positions like sure. that too. Yeah. And, and that's what I really been working on this quarantine <laughs> is uh, I've been grappling with some bigger guys and I've really noticed, dude, it's just those small decisions. Okay. Well, I'm going to let him take my back. No, 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 no. I'm not going to let him take my sure. back because if he gets on my back, then that's another three minutes out of our five minute round. And then all of a sudden I get out and what I have two minutes to, but you know to dazzle everybody and make make them think that i'm winning you know what yep. i mean so yep. it's yep. just um as long as i can keep people off my back i'm actually good even if they're on top and they're doing whatever i don't feel like people are doing damage you know when i'm fighting them so yep yep so the ufc featherweight division is is actually quite stacked on on, on the top end and, and the middle portion uh h- yeah. how do you feel you stack up with the, with the rest of the division i was gonna go out to uh I think I stack up good, man. I, I mean, look at, I, and I, I hate to compare it because it was like on a loss and I, dude, I obsessed. 
Dan Ige, Ige, maybe he'll see this, maybe he won't, but I obsess over him. I watch his that fight me and him yeah. had, yeah. and I get so fucking mad when I watch that fight. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what was I thinking? What did I do? Like, And i just like, oh, I did that. I made that mistake, you know? Yeah. But um, look at him. He's trashed everybody else. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I just don't feel like he did me like the way he's done everybody else. I feel like um that i i had maybe the the jitters and i was in my own town and i just had the jitters yeah and um i i definitely think that later on down the road i'd like to get another win or two out and uh go visit the pi ufc yep. pi and, and definitely i think later on down the road i'd like to see ega in hawaii or something like that I think yeah that'd right be cool you want you want you want to re- revisit that again yeah that'd be i think that'd be that'd be ideal for me personally um yep. in in the future Yep. So, yep. Uh, as a fighter, what are some of the other UFC fighters that you enjoy watching? Uh, who do I enjoy watching? I, dude, you know who I got to meet and I enjoy watching them. And I yep. just didn't, yeah, I just, uh, is uh, Luis Pena. Yeah, right. Bob Ross. Yep. Yeah, dude, I, dude, that guy's cool as fuck. Um, enjoyed, wa- always enjoy watching him fight. Um, you know, always enjoy watching Anthony fight. It's kind of yep. weird. Now that I like it, 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 like over the last maybe two or three years, I don't even watch UFC fights unless one of my teammates are fighting. Sure. So like, yeah. So I just like, but I I enjoy like watching Paul. I enjoy watching Anthony fight. Um, you know, you know who was a really good when he was in the UFC, Chico Camas, dude. I always enjoyed watching Chico Camas when he was in the UFC. Like that yeah. dude's a fucking beast. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, Anthony is actually in UFC two four nine, right? Him and Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So him and Cowboy, man, that's going to be an exciting fight. I think. Yeah, uh, I know it's going to be an exciting fight. We're going to see if Cowboy's going to uh, going to respect that that rear kick, you know, because that's what yep. caught his. Yep, that's what caught him last time is that rear kick. Yeah. Uh, but I almost feel like if he respects it too much, it's going to leave a lot of other openings other for Anthony. Opened. Yep. Yeah, so it's just like, and Anthony, dude, that guy is just forever growing, dude. Like, it's just like crazy, you know, win or lose or whatever. That guy's always learning. So Hmm. it's going to, this is a good matchup for him. And, uh, we'll, you know, it'd be nice to see what he gets after this. Yeah. I felt like that fight came out of nowhere. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah, it did. That's a really stacked card, by the way. What do you think about that card? That card, I don't even, let me see here. Oh man, it's huge! It's a uh, yeah, it's like look, four it's hours UFC of forty nine. Yeah, it's insane. UFC two forty nine. So let me read it out: Ferguson Gaethje, Cejudo Cruz, oh. Ingano, Ingano Rosenstruck, yeah. Stevens and Cada, Hardy Del Castro. For the prelims, it's Cowboy and Pettis, Olenek and Vadum, Waterson and Esperanza, Hall and Jacare, Luque and Price. Michelle and Rosa, Span and Elvery. It's a mess. It's really stacked. One, I got Ga- Gaethje. Gaethje's like Ferguson's like, fucking awesome too. And, yeah. you know, he has those jujitsu root, roots and stuff. But, yeah. dude, Gaethje is just a madman. Yeah. And I got I got the, the chance to watch him like train before uh, in Minneapolis when I was supposed to fight that dude. And his, he had like some kind of brain trauma. He yeah. wouldn't like clear his fight. And so I came in, I like got a chance to watch Gaethje when he fought, um, when he fought Cerrone. Yeah. Right. And, um, dude, I was just watching him just train like before weigh-ins, like the yeah. day before weigh-ins or whatever. And I was like, dude, this guy is awesome. Like I would, <laughs> yep. you know, um, but so Gaethje, I think I got Gaethje, I, I got Cruz, you yep. know, cause Cruz is like that comeback dude, dude. He, he always gets hurt and then he comes back and like wins the title and then, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they take it from him, and then he gets hurt again, and then he comes back and wins another title. I was like, yeah. dude. Yeah. So I got him all day. Oh. Yeah, it's a it's a really stacked card. Then, it, yeah, it'll be good just to have some fights on, basically, some a live event. Yeah, it, well, I heard it was in Jacksonville, Florida. Yep. Yep. It, I believe That's it is somewhere in Florida. In the, yeah. And main, they've got two other events. Jacksonville, Florida. Correct. Yep. Okay. And that's what, in May. Correct. Yeah. Okay. They have three events in total. But the thing is, like, I mean, Dana said a couple of things 
in terms of guaranteeing cards before, yet to be seen. But I feel like given the fact that he's comfortable disclosing the, the locations and, and what state is in, it, it looks like all systems go. Fingers crossed, I guess. Is it? I haven't read any articles or anything yet on it, but is it like on tribal land or something? That hasn't been disclosed. I, I'm not familiar with, you know, the tribal land in Florida. Like, But like, remember the last time they were holding it in Tachi Pelts, right? So... Um, yeah, it would probably have to be. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this whole UFC Island? <laughs> Dude, when they said that UFC Island stuff, yeah. all I could think is like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what everyone was thinking hey, of. Man, th- there's a, hey, man, there's a combat tournament on an island. We're going to win a bunch of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but there's COVID surrounding it, so it's a death match. Like, <laughs> oh man, they should just allow you to dress up in costumes as well, <laughs> dude. That would be tight. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that it. Like, you, you just saw so many memes, so many uh, illustrations. It should be interesting, mate. You've you've been a pleasure. Like, like Jordan, you're so much fun. Like, I I have no doubt that you know from a personality perspective, the UFC is lucky to have you and. and uh, I see big things in your future. Are you familiar with this? Uh, it's 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 Sorry. gone viral. The Bill Clinton swag. Are you, are you familiar with it? Okay. No. So what it what, what is it, it is? It's a meme of Bill Clinton with a three or three or four vinyls. Yeah, you can Google it and have a look. But what people are doing is they're yeah. tagging their mates in and they're saying that in this COVID environment, what would be three records that you'd you'd listen to to get you through? So. Jordan Griffin, what what are three records that are like, close to you that if you had to listen to to, to to three albums, like what would they be to get you through COVID? I'm like the whole, the worst person to ever ask that to. <laughs> like you'd have to ask me like like what three Spotify channels I would listen to. Like not records because I don't know names to shit. You're I could right? be standing. I could be. I could be sitting next to Drake, and it would take me a minute <laughs> to realize that I was sitting next to Drake. Like that's yeah. just the sad truth of it. What about so, Miguel? Then? Would, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a riot. It, but, yeah, it would take me a minute. It would take me a minute. So let's. Uh, okay, let's say. Let's just say. I'm just gonna go with my top three like songs. Like, uh, let's go with songs. Spotify, Spotify sure. channel, radio yep. channels. So yeah. don't laugh at me. Uh, too Coldplay. late. No, that's, Coldplay. Coldplay is good. Yep. Post Malone. Yep. And lately, it it has been Drake. I've been listening to a lot of Drake lately. Yeah, nice one, <laughs> nice one, nice one. Out, out of interest, this is off tangent, but have you watched the new uh, the MJ documentary, The Last Dance? MJ. Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, no, no, I haven't. I think I saw something. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw something on it, but uh, I didn't. Um, that's where they're like all roughing him up and stuff like that, right? Um, that might be, that might be a preview for the next two episodes because they're releasing it two episodes at a time every week. You're probably oh. about the bad boys Pistons era where they did. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it resembled more f- NFL football than basketball back in the day. So. What's it called? MJ what? The last dance. The last okay. dance. Let me see. The last dance. Basketball or nothing. I don't think that's it. No, that's not it. We play res ball. Nope. Yeah, it's not it. Uh, the Carter effect. Nope. You're getting close. I'm, I'm not seeing it. Really? The Last Dance? Yep. And it's on Netflix? Yep. Hmm. I see Space Jams. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, uh, definitely yeah, have a look yeah, at it man, at your time. I did but see it's something there. on it, though. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's yeah. pretty good. I bet it's on Hulu or something. Yeah. No, it's definitely yeah, on Netflix. It's it definitely out. on Netflix and ESPN. It's on Netflix for sure? 100%. Jesus, I mean, what's could... wrong with me? Okay, here. Let me see here. It should it's even it's it should be featured on your carousel, to be honest. It's been doing the yeah, rounds. Let me see. Continue watching my list. Popular on Netflix. I'm going to go to popular on Netflix. Yep. Well, on another note, have you seen Tiger King? I have. That's just ridiculous. You, yes, I'm sorry. Did you see but... that when that chick got her? <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> you see that when that chick got her arm ripped off, and then she was like, "You know, I just love the tiger so much. I went yeah. back to work like five days later. Yeah, like, like, what? 
What's wrong right. with you? I love I love tigers, <laughs> but you know they look at you like drumsticks. So no. <laughs> yeah. No way. Awesome, yeah, I'm mate. not gonna find it. I'll, I'll find it eventually. I'll find it eventually. All good. All good. Well, Jordan, it's been like amazing chatting with you, mate. Uh, keep keep in touch with the show. Let us know. Uh, because there's no doubt once the UFC goes by, they'll they'll have a lot of fights to make up, and uh, you know, I, I think you'll be uh, in the mix of in the mix of the jungle some sometime soon. Yeah, definitely, man. I'll hit awesome. you up. It's, good. it's nice talking to you. Thank you for having me on. Cheers, bud. Bye.